Hi, welcome to Top Table with me, Nick Church. This is the part of the channel where we get to meet wedding suppliers and find out what makes them tick, why they love doing what they're doing, and what they like as people, because you can't find that out from Facebook and you can't find out sometimes from a wedding fair if it's really noisy and chaotic. Some of these suppliers, photography for example, are gonna be with you all day, so you definitely don't want someone that's an absolute psycho um, with you for that duration of time. So if you're really enjoying these sessions, then please do subscribe to the channel so you get notified of new videos as they get made. I once arrived at a wedding venue and I was there to take some bridal preparation pictures. I could see the bride was quite nervous, so to put her mind at ease, I said to her, look, don't worry, I'm not going to take any really close-up photos until you've had your hair and makeup done. Well, that was when she said, well, it's been done already, and then I noticed that the wedding supplier was actually packing up her stuff. Well, that was the first time that I met Emily Woolley. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm <laughs> joking. But she is here today. A few Emily facts for you. Emily's based in Porter's Head, which is where I grew up. Emily runs Beauty by Emily Faith and works across the southwest of much the same area as Nick Church Photography. We have loads of the same clients, although we haven't actually met in person before, so it's really great to be face to face. So welcome Emily. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I think the last client we shared was Louise Hopkins, um, who got married last year. And Louise and Vince had a very small wedding, so it was a very um, COVID on-trend wedding, but way before um, everyone else. And um, that was a lovely wedding, I really enjoyed it, and Louise looked beautiful. I put some pictures up um, through this bit so, so everyone can see. She started her way through the mail today Couldn't express what she had to say in her It's hard to talk about any kind of um, wedding planning without bringing COVID up at the moment. How are you finding that your business has been impacted? Well, a hugely impacted. Um, my personal business, Beauty by Emily Faith, I'd intended to do between 30 and 40 weddings this year, and I will have done seven. And the other business that I run, we normally do 300 weddings, and we wow. will have only done 50. So that is massive, mm -hmm. massive. Have you been busy doing other things then? Particularly in the first lockdown, I did quite a lot of live um, tutorials on my Instagram page. Um, oh, I saw those, they were good, really good. <laughs> They were good fun. I could have 10 minutes to do a 10 minute makeup look live right. on my channel. And um, people seem to really enjoy that and uh, get on board with that. And then things have kind of evolved. I'd love to think 2021 and we'll be back in it. And all those hundreds of brides that have booked in with Southwest Bridal Hair and Makeup are gonna get their weddings as they planned. Have you got any advice to brides that might be planning right now that you could give them? <laughs> best advice I could give is to be upfront with your suppliers so talk to them about how you're feeling and ask what your terms and conditions mm. are with each supplier because if they don't have any that should be a little bit of a warning I think just blind just going ahead fingers crossed is probably not a great idea also not a great idea is withholding and not booking someone because you're not sure I think Absolutely. you usually need to book the right suppliers that have yeah. got terms and conditions that you can clearly see what's going to happen yeah for plan A and plan B. Could you go into a bit about the, the hair and the, the, how the two companies work together? Yeah, okay, so Southwest Bridal was set up coming up to six years ago now. I'm a makeup artist, you wouldn't want me touching your hair. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind, because <laughs> I didn't get to the barber in time, but i <laughs> Hair is not my thing at all. And when I was um, getting married, I got in touch with Stacey Jade Wedding Hair, and we did quite a few weddings together. I noticed how amazing she was and booked her for my wedding and then she started cutting and colouring my hair and we got chatting about the amount of clients we were turning away because obviously in hair and makeup you can realistically only do one wedding a day mm -hmm. like photography um, and so we decided to set up this sideline business. We had no idea where it was going to go and hmm, coming up six years later we've got around 30 girls on the team. Brilliant. Um, which is amazing. Mm. And we do roughly between 250 and 300 weddings a year. Wow. Which is insane. The virtual we... high five to that. <laughs> <laughs> right. What did you do for this? I went to Bristol Old Vic Theatre School and I trained in stage management um, and specifically television. Oh, right. I spent a lot of time working in continuity and that's kind of where I thought I was going to be going. So. so you're very used to working with consummate professionals yeah. like myself. Absolutely. 
that just got it in their blood really you can't you, you can't you can't describe it <laughs> yeah um and then i ended my career in television um working on dickinson's real deal and i production managed that show right. for a couple of years before going off to have my baby and i started working for body shop as a body shop at home consultant right i did all their training found i had a bit of a flair for makeup that's the first i knew of that um did you been into makeup before is, no, is it, yeah, no, when you were young, my, you... my mum didn't wear makeup really? i'd never done any makeup training um but suddenly i was finding that the product i was selling the most was the makeup products and my manager was like you're quite good at this my friends were getting married and my sister got married and i did their makeup and suddenly i started having a portfolio of weddings and uh, a friend of mine who was working in the industry at the time just kind of went em you know you've got a business here right and i was yeah. like ah, no <laughs> oh my god You'll not be, you won't be surprised that I'm not an expert in makeup, but the brides that I've worked with, that have worked with you, seem to have a really natural style of makeup where you can just see they look it really beautiful, but without it being harsh. And is that an accurate yes, description? Yes, um, I spent a few years trying to work out what I wanted to be and um, trying to be everything to everyone. And actually it doesn't work what worked for me was when i realized that natural makeup and by natural i mean an enhanced version of yourself mm -hmm. so if for um, a wedding you're going to need to wear a teeny bit more makeup so because the it's amazing what the camera can do in yeah. terms of making you suddenly look like you're hardly wearing anything and i suppose like <clears throat> being on stage if, yeah, if you're absolutely. away from people you need a bit more dynamic than perhaps exactly. you would otherwise having said that i have worked with so many clients that that even that extra tiny step is too much for them mm -hmm. and so it's about working with them to find a style that makes them feel comfortable yeah your photographs are really important but if you walk down the aisle and you do not feel like you yeah. or your groom or your partner is at the other end of the aisle and they don't recognize you if they ask where the bride is <laughs> you've got a problem you know um in my opinion <laughs> you've got a problem so i very much pitch myself as a natural makeup mm -hmm. artist you know, I work with people who basically either hardly wear any makeup, no makeup, or um, have never had their makeup done before. And they are quite often quite nervous about the makeup process. And hopefully what I do for them is reassure them and make them feel special, but not overly made. Just go back to weddings. I am there probably when the, when the bride's having her makeup done. The, the makeup artist has been there for hours beforehand, usually. And do you find that there are some brides that would want touches up, touch ups through the day where they want you to stay around a bit longer? Yeah, occasionally. My strong opinion is that if your makeup doesn't last 12 hours, then your makeup artist hasn't done the job properly. Right. Personally. So you really shouldn't require anything more than lip, a lipstick application. Mm -hmm. Can you sometimes just teach one of the bridesmaids to do Absolutely. that? Or... Yeah. And, you know, with it. bridesmaids having to wear uh, face coverings, mm -hmm. um, they might need a little bit of a touch up here and there, especially if their makeup is heavy. That's where you're going to hit more problems. The lighter the makeup, the actually, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to last longer, but it's not going to shift quite in the same way. So... Um, what I have done in the past is, um, with the couple of weddings I've done since, if they've had to wear a face covering, is provide them with a little top-up kit to oh, just... That's a good idea. Yeah, to top up if there are places where the face mask has rubbed a bit of makeup off. So as it's turning into a bit of tradition with these sessions, I've got some questions from a couple of Facebook groups from brides that I've asked whether they have any questions for a makeup artist. So you happy to answer some of those? Yeah, you haven't, I haven't pre-warned you with these. Um, <laughs> Do grooms ever get asked, do, do grooms ever ask for treatments on the wedding morning? That's from Sarah Ann. Um, very, very rarely. We get, with Southwest Bridal, we get a few. So it might, it's more likely to be down the hairstyling route. Mm -hmm. um, but I've certainly worked with a few grooms who've required anti-shine, dark circle removal, things like that. Um, that it's rare. Right. To be fair, it's rare, but it, it comes up. Okay. There you go, there you are, Sarah Ann. So maybe Sarah Ann's um, fiance is, is keen on that. That is a thing that, that you, you can do. Ashley says, Do you also do. Oh, no. 
that was from my previous my previous interview <laughs> okay. about funerals. So you don't a different avenue, although that, that must be a thing as well. But I don't think that's something you're you're into. <laughs> So Tammy says, are you married and did you do your own makeup? Okay, yes, I'm married and yes, I did. I'm far too much of a control freak to have let somebody else do it for me. <laughs> Having said that, a few years on, I know more people now and I maybe would have trust would trust someone now. To be running South West Bridal, everyone ha- has to be trades tested by me. So they have to do my makeup before right. they join the team. And I personally wouldn't want to do that for somebody else um, who was a makeup artist. Um, but it's also, I've learned that um, other people have different styles and some beautiful styles so mm. it might be that if I was yeah. to do it again not that I'm planning on getting married again <laughs> no. very happy we should, we very happily happen. married yeah. <laughs> um. evidently <laughs> evidently from the second chart on the way um, <laughs> yeah. Megan asks thanks for the question Megan she says I've booked a makeup she says she's booked a makeup artist um, who she really liked the makeup artist said she's going to do a style that fits what Megan wants she said, but looking at her work, she sees several brides all look quite similar, and it's that that isn't a style that, that she likes. So this reminds me of a a hairdresser that used to um, that my mum and my sister would go to, who was a German hairdresser, ran a unisex salon, and when, whenever they would go in, his only question about what they wanted was he say much off, and that would be the only that would be the only guidance he needed, and then that, that would give him a steer. Um, so yeah, how how would she approach that conversation with her makeup artist? Well, personally, that makeup artist should be looking at the hair tone and eye colour and coordinating a look to suit that. Having said that, you there are a certain amount of looks that you can put together that would suit lots of people all the time. And it, it you know, as a natural makeup artist particularly, it's very easy to find yourself doing similar looks on lots of people. It might be that people have booked her in the past because that's what they like. So... Just explain to her what you like. And if you've got a photograph of how you've liked yourself looking in the past, that's a really good steer for her. Normally, I would say pick out a look that you've seen her do that you like. Mm-hmm. But if you haven't got one particularly that works with your hair colour and eye colour... Sounds like that's the issue, that they're, they're, then, they're not like Then that. you need to steer her in another direction. Yeah, that's great. I'll take a picture of yourself where you, you like how your makeup's done. Yeah. Or perhaps that someone else has got a different style of makeup, the one that the one that you like, then that's going to be a good idea. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you, Emily, for joining us today. It's been really lovely to chat to you. I'm sure everyone's learned a huge amount about you, how you've grown your business, and about makeup artistry as well. A huge Nick Church photography and top table. Best wishes for the baby. When's the baby June? Seventh of March. Right. Well, best wishes for that. And thanks for everyone for joining. If you enjoy these videos, please do subscribe so you get notified of new ones. And we'll catch up with you next time. And then run away Lay a shot and pissed And then fly away I wonder when I do a YouTube thing I'm on my own and I can just do it about a hundred times until it's right. Yeah, yeah. I can't do that because <laughs> you'll you're, you're, you're have a baby by the time I finish <laughs> Last time You'll go f***ing <laughs> off I've worked with some oh, no, I've worked with some imbeciles in my time <laughs> Right, 